I want to show you examples of some work my former students have done. This is one from my student and in it you'll see various assignments that we did throughout the semester blended into the city block. I think he did a great job on this. The next one is a Google Earth image and this is the image he based his city block on. And you can see that he did a great job recreating it from the photo. The next one shows a very artistic, unique rendering of a city block and if you look closely you can see the details. Here's one, a futuristic city block floating in the sky. Here's another one where the student used a Google Earth image to recreate the intersection. Here's one where it was rendered at night, which has a really cool effect. This one is one that was recreated from a city block where she used to live in Dublin. Here's another one that this student did as extra credit. It's of a train station intersection. And this one, the student took a photo of an area in Pueblo, Colorado that she decided to recreate using the perspective tool. I made a page, it's eight and a half by 11. And let me see, there's the rulers. What we wanna do is the per perspective grid. So go ahead and activate that. Here are the various planes. So the blue on the blue plane represents the left side, the orange plane represents the right side, the green plane represents the ground. I remember it this way as green as in grass on the ground. And this background blue plane really is no plane, so it's flat. So if you're building things like you can see off on my desktop here, I have some items sitting over there waiting to show you. That's where um, you would want to work is make sure you're on the back plane. And I remember it as the, the sky. Sky blue, it's in the back, it's flat, it's behind everything. That's how I recall using it, which makes it a little easier for me. So the tool you need to make sure you use when activating the various items on the, the, uh, the perspective grid is the perspective selection tool. So down here on the bottom, you can pull these planes apart by grabbing the plane handle down here. So we're going to go ahead and start with this, and I'm going to start with a coffee shop. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool. I'm going to make sure I am on the back no plane because I want it to be completely flat. Right, so we'll do something like this. Now I want to panel the right side of the building. So let me deactivate that. I'm going to draw this. And to make sure that you have Snap to um, Grid activated, go up under uh, um, your view down to Perspective Grid and over to Snap to Grid. It won't work when you're working on the flat surface because that isn't technically a grid, but it'll work on the others. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to kind of put some walls up. Now over here, you can see I made a swatch. Do you remember how we did our repeat pattern swatches? And I actually have that in here, right? So we're going to grab this, drop it in here, deactivate that, open this up, and I made mine a one by one. Okay, and say done. Okay, now when I go to here, I can select this as my swatch. Oh, not on my stroke. Make sure it's on my fill. Okay, and it's really big, and I want it much, much smaller, so I'm going to open up here. Remember how we did this? We can open it up and assign it probably down to 20. Okay, so it just reduced it in here. Now, I can't obviously do it on this one because look what happens. It comes in straight. So instead, I've made myself a brick wall over here. Can you see my wall? Okay, so what we want to do is, I probably have it a little too big. Um, if I reduce it much, it's probably gonna change the corner radius some, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna take this and I wanna make these two planes, because I have no tan in the background. I wanna take these two planes and make them this light color. Come on. What's going on? Oops, nope, I want you select one of these, and I want that light color, and it won't go. Okay, why won't you go? 
Here is it. Did I lock it? Is that what my problem is? No, I didn't lock it. Okay, let me put this in here so I have it. All right, now I'm going to select these two, take my eyedropper and select this. There we go. All right, so now when I take this item, I'm going to group it. I'm going to copy it and paste it because I want to make sure I keep my master over here. Then I'm going to take my perspective selection grid tool. I am selecting the blue side. So let me come over here and show you. So once I grab this, look how it automatically matches and follows the grid. Isn't that neat? So I can kind of get it in approximately the right size. But as you'll see, the grid, um, the bricks, let me hide this so you can see it better, hang off the edge. So what I want to do is hide this. Come on. Select this shape, copy. I'm going to bring it all back, show all. I'm going to put it in front of my item, and I'm going to select these, and then I'm going to do mask. Remember how you do mask? You do object, clipping mask, make, or command 7. And I'm going to do the same thing for this side. I'm going to copy it. And I am going to bring my wall over here. Copy of this. I'm going to take my perspective selection tool, make sure it's on the orange side. And as soon as I grab it and bring it down here, you can see it scales down. Again, I'm going to make it roughly the size of the wall. Right? And I'm just kind of doing this quickly so you can so I can get through everything without it taking too much of your time. Bring the other item to the front, do clipping mask, make. Whoops, where did it go? I'm going to grab this color, this block, this one, man seven, and voila. You can see my sides are smaller than the front by quite a bit, so I'm going to go back in here. Not this one, maybe 75%, no, even more, 50%, uh, maybe a little bit too much, 60, let's do that. Okay, so now if I were to hide my guide, my grid, you can see my brick wall. Kind of nifty, huh? Okay, let me do a save. Okay, so now what we want to do, well, it's got to finish saving, sorry about that. You can see um, this is kind of a chess piece, a chess piece, that's how they're made. Um, this is the car that you guys have made. So these are elements that you can add to your city block and they're relatively easy to do as you know. So what we'll do is I want to make a window on here, right, on my coffee shop. So I already have this side selected so I can just make a window down here and it'll automatically go on here. But I want to fill it full of that same exact shading that's on this window here. So all I do is take my eyedropper and sample it. And then above, I want to put some windows. So I'm going to select this, say copy. Well, first group, copy, and then paste it over here. Okay, now I'm going to take my perspective selection tool and I'm going to grab it and make it fit onto my building. I'm sizing it down. And the really neat thing about this is once you have it on the building, I can drag it over and then hit Command D and it will go to infinity. See how small it gets? It just follows the perspective line. Isn't that neat? Very cool. Okay, so I have my building, my windows on the building on this side. Okay, let me go over to one of my windows. Okay, let's make a planter box. So what I want to do is I want to, for now, I'll just default to black and white. All right, so I want a planter box that goes something like this. Oops, what's happening here? Okay, let's put it over here. I'm going to take that stroke off. Come on, leave it with the white fill. Then I want to do the other angles, so I take my perspectives perspective selection tool and I'm going to do this box so I'm going to make that one a little bit darker whoops what's happening I'm trying to grab you you silly little box 
And now if I want to put some flowers in my planter box, I can also, um, oh, I should build that side out too. Let me just do that real quick. Oh, it's on the wrong side. Make sure you have the right panel selected, the right plane when you're doing this. Otherwise, it can really screw things up. Okay, I'm going to bring this to the front. Okay, so what I would recommend you do is um, put things on layers. So, but for now, we'll just go, I want symbols. I'm going to open up my symbol library. I'm going to go down to flowers, open these up. And I can put a bunch of flowers in my flower box. These are all coming in so big. You can make all your own, but just for a quick demonstration, I'm trying to show you these. And do I have another one kind of like that? I guess this one will work. Whoops. Each one of these items as well. And do I get the one back here? And I can move them down to the next window as well. So you get the idea. So let me put a roof on the top. So here's background. Is that the buildings? Uh, I should say buildings. Might be more appropriate. And I can take this tool, go to the green for the bottom, for the ground, and put a roof in here. I can make it a brown roof. And send it to the back. Okay. All right, so now let's um, work on the other side. I'm going to put another window over here, so I'm going to grab this window so my properties um, are remembered. I'm going to come over and select the blue plane on the left side and put in a window there. And then what I want to do is come over and do this awning. So here you'll see my awning. I'm going to copy this, paste this, come on, oh, not that, copy this, paste that, I'm going to take my um, perspective grid tool, put it over here. Let me zoom in. Whoop. Come on. Oh, heaven six. Here we go. I'm going to reduce it some. Let me skew it just a little bit more so we can see the window. We can scale it this way and this way. Right, so I have an awning over my window. Don't need it to be that long. Okay, so I have a really big awning. Back to you know what? All right. So again, take my tool. I've got to have the right tool for it to snap to the grid. Put it above my window. And now let's try the tool again. I, think I like that a little bit better. Okay. All right. And then I can come up to Effects, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and I can put a drop shadow underneath that. Now I want to come over and get these scallops. Same thing. I can scale them down a little bit. I know that that's way too big. Take my perspective tool and slap it into place. Voila. So we have something like this. I guess it's off just a wee bit so I could get really precise on it. 
All right, so now let's um, let's put our coffee cup on the building. So we already did that on another project. So you can take this item here and move it over onto here. Reduce it down. So now I have a coffee shop that's elevated over the building, which is great. All right, so now let's put a name on the building. I'm going to make sure I'm on the flat plane. I'm on signage and I'm going to call it, how about uh, Rosie's oh, Diner. Same thing, let me make this font really bold so it stands up, stands out I should say. And I am going to give it a black stroke and a yellow fill. Oh, that stroke is way, way too big. Let's make this much smaller. Okay, so now I can take my perspective tool. I'm going to put it on this side of the building like so. Right? And now I want to go to 3D Extrude and Bevel. Obviously, I don't need it nearly that big. And like that. Okay, say okay. So now I have this on my building. You could have extruded it up here as well. Let me just, you know what? Let me just show you that. So you could take those these diner, and I could have taken this. Let's see if it will do those properties. Then go to extrude and bevel. And once I have that, I could come up here and slap that to the side of the building. There we go. Oh, hang on a minute. Get the right tool. And slap that to the building. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. That would be part of the problem. Like, why can't I see that? Okay. And so here I have it here as well. So either way gets the same effect. All right, so let's talk about um, some of the other buildings. So let's go on the building layer. I'm going to lock the ground later, layer. And we want to put some other buildings in here. So let's just pick some colors for the buildings. And I'll pick this side. And I'm noting my line on the ground down here. I can take that, send that to the back. And that's my darker size, so now let me pick a little bit lighter color even for the front. Check the other plane. And voila. Okay. I've got strokes on these, which you wouldn't want. I'm going to make this one a little bit darker side here. Um, let's do that. And then I will do for this color here, that one. Okay. So now we have two more buildings and I can see, you can see a little bit of the ceiling, so of the building. So again, I will just take this and give myself a roof. Send it to the back, make it a dark color like most roofs are. All right, let's make another building. Um, I will pick this plane this time. And voila. And let me pick this plane. And voila. That one should be a wee bit darker. And I will send this to the back. 
And let's just say I want to make this have a brick pattern as well. Right? You could do this. Go up to your scale tool, double click, make sure my preview is open. Reduce this to maybe 20%. How's that look? Oh, it's still too big. How about 10? Okay. So if I do that, then let me change the front of this color to, let me use my picker here. We'll just do something like this. Okay. All right. So let's just say we want to put like graffiti on the building. I have in my swatches here a graffiti. It's from an image I found online. I thought it was in here. Maybe it's not anymore. Um, I put it into my symbols here. So this is the graffiti. Oh, there it is. Okay. So what I want to do is, oh, come back. Put it on my building here. So all I need to do is pick the right side of the building, grab my symbol, put it on here. It's way too, oops, way too big. Oh, come on. Maybe you could use a different tool for this. All right, and what I would want to do is change the transparency of it so my bricks can be seen. So let me grab both of these objects, send it to the back so it's behind. Oh, you want to why it's on the wrong plane again? That's why you should lock your layers so you're always working on the correct layer. So I've got this and this, send it to the back. And so now I've got a wall mural on that building. So to do some quick things, obviously, um, let me get rid of this so I can put it back in for you. So on the sky layer, we'd go below the ground layer, and I would make a box. Oops, make sure you're on the background layer. Sky blue layer, I can make a box for the background. I already have a gradient in here, but you can pick this one by default. Open up your gradient. Pull this baby all the way back so it's really light. Do the switcheroo on here. This has an opacity to it. I'm going to change this to a white. Okay, so now I have my sky. You can make your own uh, clouds as well, which of course you all know is pretty easy to do. You could take your paintbrush and let me see, smooth with, make it much bigger. Uh, let me see, do I want this one? How about, yeah, we can do this one. So you could, in theory, you know, paint some sky in here, you know, some clouds into your sky, right? And you could affect, um, you could put a, a gradient on it or just make it white, change opacity, right? And put a bunch of clouds in there. If you open up, I already have it in here, but if you went to Open Symbol Library down to Nature, in here as well, not only were there trees and plants and bugs, but they have clouds. So you could put some of these clouds in the sky, different sizes, different opacities, right? You can flip them around. Go to my transparency, cut some of them back. So here's your, your sky options, which are really fun, right? Send to the back. And change the opacity of this a little bit. Okay. All right, so here's my sky. And you can always put some birds, make your own birds in the sky, right? Or you can use some of these bugs, right? So, right, you can make it look like you've got your own bird flying, right? So you can do whatever you want with that. Um, here are some other items that we've done. So if you can remember these, uh, let's zoom in over here. Let me move these over so you can see them. The rest of these are like chess sets, right? So these things are what you just did before. 
Let me go wireframe, right? That's how simple they are to make lamp posts, fire hydrants, trash cans. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can think of to put on here, but I can grab this one and say, I want, oops, not that. Oh, come on. If I'm grabbing it the right way. It's got to be reduced. It's obviously way too big for fire hydrants. It's probably still way too big, right? And I can put them in designated areas. We can take our street lamps and we can put those wherever we would like. Not that I want you to use these objects, I'm just trying to give you some ideas as far as what you could do. Okay, let's see here. Um, here's our trash can. Right, those could go on the street. And then look in our nature palette. We can take trees, we can put them on here. Right, if you're, let's say, making a park. So in the background, maybe back here, is a playground and park, right? So we could, oops, make sure it's on the right plane. I'll start it over here. So maybe behind the building, we've got a grassy park. Let me, come on. And it's on the wrong layer. Make sure it's on the ground layer. Mm, I'm going to do this a little bit different. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer. I'm going to do it over this way just kind of partially behind here. Okay, so this kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do on your on your skyscrape and on your building or on your um, perspective street. I, I want to make sure that you understand I do not want you to copy what I just did. I did this just to show you and give you some ideas of what you could do and how to do them but I want you to come up with your original block I want to see streets I want to see multiple buildings you can do it at any angle so you could move this perspective grid around so use your imagination look on Google Earth for photos you can look on um, um, your photos you can drive around town and take pictures of some place in town here or some place you want to live whatever you want to do use your imagination but I want some variety you have some time to work on this so there's no huge rush. So really put some effort into this. It'll be a fantastic portfolio piece for you.